how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. This, I mean, go, like good is like the go-to thing to say, kind of, but like right. overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed, frustrated, frustrated um, confused, but also feeling creative and innovative, and you know, coming up with solutions. Yeah, I mean, so. I read the piece that you wrote for Blabby. And even when I read the title, the piece itself was not what I expected in the most beautiful way. And your documentary also is such a testament to your bravery and courage to be vulnerable, to talk about therapy, to talk about healing, in a way that I feel like our communities don't always talk about it because, and I'll, and I'll share something with you that I, that I learned uh, recently and then I'll give you the floor. But I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about just survivors in general, survivors of sexual assault, police brutality, bullying, whatever it is, right? And how, when we see, the, when we see an injustice happen, it is not, the survivor of that injustice's responsibility to advocate for themselves. It is on us who see this to become upstanders and to actually fight for justice and fight for what's right and allow people the ability and the process to heal. And you have an interesting story in which you went through what you went through and then you ran for city council and then you did something that was so courageous in that you step down and realize I have to take care of me first. And so what Absolutely. I want to like hear from you today is about your process of healing and why that is so important for people to understand when they are fighting this fight today, but also when they expect more from survivors when sometimes that isn't fair or even possible. Right. Um, wow. So while I was going through the through my process, I think people are seeing my strength, uh, my courage, my resilience, and they didn't see how much pain I was in, right? Um, a lot of people were, were focused on my healing, well, my hero and not my healing. Um, so yeah. they say, Leon, Leon, you're such an inspiration. You're so amazing. Right, because of all these things that I was doing in, in the community and as an activist and as an entrepreneur. And while I was doing all these great things as a coping mechanism, I was suffering on the inside. And so it got to a point where I couldn't suppress the pain any longer. Um, it got to a point where uh, the mask didn't work. And I had to literally take the mask off and heal. And so, you know, when I, when I got to that breaking point, you know, I had to make a conscious decision of like, what does healing look like for me? And I decided to go to therapy because all throughout my process, I would write and I would say, this is, you know, uh, uh, writing is healing for me or, you know, speaking is healing for me. But those were just ways that I learned to take care of myself, ways that I learned to cope. Um, and so I really knew that I had to become more intentional about healing and therapy is what really uh, changed my life. Um, as far as, you know, survivors, right? Um, healing versus like, you know, being on the front lines. Um, it's hard because, you know, you, you want people to advocate advocate for you but sometimes as a survivor it's, it's kind of like well while you while you survive there's there's people that died that that um and, and their situation is worse um and so sometimes the pain is overlooked because you survive um and then you have you know constant triggers so you want to advocate for yourself um and then you want a normal life but then you have these triggers. And so like, even as an entrepreneur, you know, I would, you know, be, you know, uh, trying to build businesses or collaborate with other businesses and invest. 
Um, but then, you know, I will have a trigger, which will make me shut down for a week. And I, I won't be able to uh, send emails back or I'll be looking at text messages. Um, but I, I won't, some, I, there will be some type of block where I wouldn't respond to people because of what I was, you know, suffering from internally. And so um, it was just so important for me as a, as a human being to go to heal so I can, uh, so I could learn to operate as normally as possible. How can we who admire your work, and this is for any person in your position, how can we better support that process for you? For, so for instance, you mentioning, you know, working on your business, and then experiencing a trigger and not being able to get back to emails for a week. What can we do so that we are more, we have more open communication, more understanding, and we are truly able to support people in their process of healing. Right. Uh, I think one, one thing is understanding that just because someone looks well, doesn't mean they are well. And so um, just checking in, having that check in, um, trying, you know, trying best not to make assumptions uh, because, unfortunately, like when I go back to those moments um, when I didn't respond to emails or text messages and I kind of shut down, I really, like, honestly, didn't know what was happening. Right? I didn't know what the trigger was. I didn't know why I could look at these emails or text messages or watch my phone ring, and I just couldn't you know, engage. I couldn't respond to people. I, I had no clue what was happening. And so, you know, for, for, you know, friends of individuals who have experienced this deep trauma, um, you know, we just, you know, I would encourage, you know, everyone to, to just be more thoughtful and mindful of what someone's experience has been and, you know, find, let, let's find innovative ways to communicate with those individuals to make that process as um, it's not going to be easy, but we we can provide comfort, you know, in the midst of the internal chaos. What's the most frustrating thing about people's response to your healing? The most frustrating thing. Hmm. Um, I, I it's hard. It's hard to say. Um, you know, as people's response to my healing, um, it's it's this. Uh, I th what is frustrating to me is the many times. So I was shot in 2012, and I've experienced several moments where there was, you know, a beating or a shooting or something that happened in this country with police officers. Um, and then what happens is uh, these uh, situations go viral right um and then there's outrage for a few weeks and they go away right and then um you know an artist drops a mixtape or you know there's you know uh, a music festival and people go back to their normal lives i've never had to I, i've never had the luxury or privilege to go back to my normal life because i every day i wake up i'm reminded of the night that i was shot and so my frustration, you know, and my concern is that these, these moments are temporary, right? Um, you know, foundations, you know, allocating money toward, you know, um, racial justice or social justice or diversity. And then, you know, time goes past where it's not a trend and people aren't as outraged and you know, I kind of feel like people forget about the pain and suffering of these families until the next police shooting um, or, or until the next beating. And so um, my hope is that with, with, you know, the outrage now, I hope that it, it lasts longer than it usually lasts, you know, because, you know, from my experience, you know, these protests will last a few weeks and then, you know, people will continue to write off ads for a few weeks after that. And then it, it'll die down a little bit. And then there'll be outrage again once uh, the officers go to trial. And then, 
you know, um, it'll die down after that until the next police shooting or beating. Um, and so I'm just, um, I'm just hoping that we can keep pressure on the, the world, right? And keep uh, making the world aware of what, you know, uh, black and brown people are experiencing in, in this country so that we can really uh, change some things and, and have um, an impact on the world. Another thing I, I believe, you know, why um, in this moment it, it, it's so different is because we're in, in the midst of, you know, um, a polit politics, right? It, it's election season. And so um, that has an impact on the way people are talking about, you know, what's happening. And my fear is that after election season, then a lot of politicians are going to be silent. A lot of, um, you know, business owners are going to go back uh, to normal. And um, yeah, I just hope that we can keep the pressure on so that we can have a real impact. Well, that takes us and pivots us into the never forgetting part, which you highlighted and so my question is okay we have we have a guaranteed what i don't know if it's a few weeks whatever you want to call it whatever the usual um cycle of intensity and pressure that exists right. so what is the and if you have an opinion on this what is your opinion on the most impactful thing you can do in this hot moment like the moment where everyone is talking about it and right then what is the responsibility on every single person who partook in this moment afterwards so that we never forget? Absolutely. I, I believe that we all have been blessed with different gifts, different talents, different relationships um, that we can utilize in these moments. So if you sing, sing about it. If you rap, rap about it. If you have a, a huge social media following, post about it. Um, if you know politicians, call about it. Um, if, if you can, you know, get out on the streets and organize, organize about it. Um, it, it like, we, we just have to keep the conversation going. And uh, we, we have to recognize what value we bring to the movement and, you know, add that value, right? Don't, let's not be afraid to show up exactly as, you know, who we are. Um, and, and I think that, you know, the way you add value to the movement may be different than how I add value to the movement. But the fact that we're on this, you know, live talking right now about it, you know, we're, we're inspiring people, we're encouraging people and engaging people in the movement so that they too can utilize their voices and uh, so that they can, you know, call their friends or their teachers or, um, you know, people will talk to their neighbors about it. Um, uh, the more aware that we become, you know, as a nation, as a world, as human beings, um, the more, you know, uh, impact that we can have. But it, it starts with uh, awareness. And then, you know, as one person talks to the next, that talks to the next person, there's always going to be, um, you know, so it's going to lead to some type of solution. And everybody's solution based on what gifts they have is going to be different. But every solution is is uh, is valuable. Thank you so much for sharing this. So I want to go back to mental health because that is something that you're very passionate about. That is something that you have chose to be open and vocal about. Why is it so important for you to in your documentary, highlight your personal therapy sessions. Yeah, so that actually was not planned, right? So I was running for city council and, um, you know, Michael Farber and, and Jackson, um, the team, they, they came to Pittsburgh to film, you know, a few things around my campaign. While the film wasn't going to be about my, like, you know, focused on my campaign, that was, like, the base of it. Um, and when they came, I didn't set up any of the, um, like, the campaign events that, you know, we talked about. Just because I was going through that that phase of, like, just disconnecting, right? Uh, and I kind of ghosted them before they came. Um, and so when they finally got to Pittsburgh, 
uh, we were thinking about brainstorming, like, where are we going to shoot? And so we shot at my grandmother's house. We shot at a park. We shot at my uncle's house. And in the midst of everything, like, I was having sad conversations with them, like, yo, I think I need to go to therapy. I'm going to make a uh, an appointment. And so um, I made the appointment, and, you know, Jackson was like, hey, bro, can I film this? And I was like... I mean, if you want to, like, just reach out to her because I don't have I don't have the energy, you know, to put put these pieces together. And so he reached out to my therapist, and um, they set it up, and and we filmed it. Yeah, we filmed, it. and that was my first therapy session ever. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't realize that. Yeah, and it was supposed to be one hour long and it ended up being about five hours long so i know the film's only 15 minutes right but you know that session was five hours long and we filmed you know the entire session i i i feel like that session itself could be a film yeah absolutely well did you decide to continue with it after that session yeah so i i go to therapy every monday and so um, I traveled the country last year, um, and you know, of course, like COVID, um, and so I actually do uh, video sessions, right? So virtual sessions. That's am and w how how has that been a critical part in not only your healing from your personal experience, but from seeing what's happening right now? Yeah, I mean. Every week, I'm looking forward to my session. Uh, Friday was overwhelming for me. I didn't eat all day Saturday. Um, I had a better day Sunday, but it was still a little bit overwhelming. And then Monday, I had my session, which completely changed the course of my week, right? And um, and so just going to therapy is like, it, it provides comfort, provides a sounding board, um, I'm able to, you know, identify if I'm making a decision from my spirit or my ego, right? Um, so my, my decision making and discernment is even stronger uh, because of therapy. What do you think the most important part of your healing process and your ongoing healing process has been that you've realized um, and that you're able to teach other people who are going through a similar situation? Um, just going to therapy helped me become my authentic self, right? Um, I've had several lived experiences that I had to survive through, right? And I picked up some good coping mechanisms and some bad coping mechanisms. Um, and so therapy helped me to identify, you know, uh, what was good for me and other people and what was bad for me and, and the people around me. Um, and so now I'm able to live my truth. I feel like my voice is stronger. Um, I'm more authentic to myself, which means I'm more authentic to people. Um, and so I think that is like the biggest takeaway uh, for me is just uh, creating a space and environment for you know, individuals to be authentic to themselves, which in turn helps all their relationships and friendships become more healthy because they are, they show up as authentic in those spaces as well. Amazing. And last question, what advice would you give to people on the front lines of these movements right now, people who are going out and protesting and who are dealing with the direct trauma or the vicarious trauma um, that goes on outside, on social media, whatever it is, who want to be vocal, who want to organize, who want to be out there, but are also just realizing the fact that they also need to be going through their own healing processes. Yeah, oh man, it's, um, there's a healthy balance, right? And so, yes, stand up, use your voice, but also make sure that your cup is full, right? I mean, there's, you know, the saying you can't pour from an empty cup. And, yeah. uh, you know, what, what I tell people is that, like, anytime you're engaged in a social movement, it's overwhelming, right? The information 
um, that you're receiving. You know, you're constantly hearing about different deaths, and, you know, police shootings and beatings or, you know, um, just different injustices around the world. It's, uh, it, can, it can definitely impact you mentally and spiritually. And so it's good to have that balance, right? So uh, I encourage people to, you know, make sure you're taking good care of yourself. Um, you know, one thing that I think is important is, you know, mindfulness. Uh, I meditate often, um, which helps me listen to that inner voice so that I'm not just making decisions based on my emotions. Um, and so uh, just having that healthy balance of, you know, thoughtfulness, mindfulness, which helps uh, develop a stronger strategy so that, you know, we're not just angry, upset, and confused and uh, in a position where we want to do something. Um, but, you know, what we're doing is not going to help us get the results that we're looking for. So just, you know, tuning into your spirit in the midst of this chaos. Thank you. What are there any other messages that you want to amplify during this time? What do we need to know? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. I think this is an, this is a important moment in history, and um, it's up to us to shape the world that you know uh, our children and grandchildren are going to grow up in. And uh, this is going to be one of those moments that you know they're going to learn about in school. Um, and so we have to be very uh, mindful and thoughtful about what we want to see in this world. And we have to be courageous. We have to be determined and persistent um, so that, you know, uh, we don't let up, right? We, we can't, you know, allow uh, these leaders to do a PR campaign. Um, and, and we can't let those PR campaigns silence us, right? We have to hold their feet to the, to the fire. We have to make sure that they are not comfortable uh, I don't believe there is a such thing as a comfortable politician. Uh, we have to, the politicians should always feel uncomfortable, right? Um, and then we can celebrate them once they get out of office, if if that's what we choose to do. Um, wow, but yeah, we, that's we so have valid. To, yeah, we have to hold their feet to the fire um, and um, just you know stay resilient, stay strong, stay dedicated, and um, and you know continue to heal. Thank you so much, Leon. Uh, thanks, Nora. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And um, if there's ever any way we can be of service, where can where can people support you and your work and all of the amazing things that you're up to? Yeah, um, well, you can follow me on my Instagram at Leon Force Speaks. Um, you can check out the short film if you haven't seen it. Um, I'll, I'll put it back in my, my bio. I have a, uh, my article in my bio right now, but I'll, I'll put my short film up there so you all can check it out. There's also um, a self-care uh, toolkit that we came up with. So there's um, my whole process of, you know, meditation, uh, writing prompts, um, you know. Oh, wow. There's, yeah, there's, there's a whole toolkit. It's, it's on Breakout's website. So I'll make sure I put the link. Um, and your the, book. And my book is on Amazon. Yes, the uh, good purchase Untold on Amazon. Uh, Leon Four Untold. Um, yeah, and so yeah, the toolkit, the video, uh, the short film, and the book is how you all can support me. Thank you so much, Leon. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time, and I hope that you are doing absolutely everything in that self care toolkit these days and taking care of yourself. Absolutely. So much Thank love you, to Lord. you and the family. Bye. Likewise. Talk to you soon. Peace. That was Leon Ford. Um, I hope you can share this with anybody who you think it might help in their process of healing and um, still pushing forward in their experience of trauma. Um, because I do think that not only is it important to focus on making sure your cup is filled, but that, um, we are out here supporting people who are survivors of any type of abuse or brutality. And it is on us to make sure that their voices are amplified. So thank you for tuning in. This was At Your Service Hour. And tomorrow we will be talking to an incredible Washington Post reporter, Karen Atia, 
on media's role in all of this. So I hope you tune in. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow's Friday. Then yes, this is it. And we will be continuing this conversation, these conversations next week. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.